Good afternoon, everyone. A uh, quick look here at the closing bells. Uh, we did see a bit of a down day today. The down, the TSX down by 0.39 and 0.6% respectively. So not major moves to the downside. You really did see, though, some pressure in tech shares weighing on the NASDAQ, which closed down by 2.7%. And in fact, quite a bit of uh, some selling momentum into those closing bells. Uh, the S&P also down on the day over 1%, 1.3% to be exact. Uh, so growth and momentum, definitely the areas of weakness in the market today. Investors continue to be concerned about that U.S. 10-year yield rising. It is hovering just beneath that 1.5% level. Uh, this, of course, has been the main common and concern in the market in terms of the potential for a rising rate environment, inflation, and what that might mean for valuations is what we've been talking about. Uh, and that was back in the conversation today. On the other side of the trade, though, you did have energy, financials, as well as industrials, kind of those reopening trades, those more value cyclical oriented areas of the market, which have had lower valuations fare quite well today. Uh, the XLE in the United States, the energy sector ETF up by 1.4%. So again, certain areas of the market performing quite well, others not so much. Uh, we did see WTI up by 2.6%. This is ahead of the OPEC Plus meeting tomorrow. Uh, Reuters reporting that um, they could consider rolling over their production cuts into April. That would be supportive for the supply demand dynamics and therefore supportive for price. And that's why you saw WT up on the day and, of course, helping the energy sector and stocks. Uh, from a headline perspective, we did hear from President Biden that they expect to have enough vaccines uh, for every adult by the end of May. Uh, we also heard that Texas is fully opened and on the economic data front, the ISM 90 manufacturing data did come in below expectations. Uh, from a stock specific uh, sector or a stock specific story, uh, I would just note that Lyft, I mentioned this yesterday, uh, it was actually up 8% today. They did raise their first quarter as well as EBITDA guidance. Alcoa, uh, aluminum producer, up by 12%. Goldman Sachs increased the rating to a buy. Away from that, on the TSX, we did see a little bit of pressure to the downside, down by 0.6%, as I mentioned. Uh, we saw IT, so technology, really the worst performer, down by 3.6%. Healthcare also under some pressure. Healthcare in Canada is mostly comprised of cannabis companies. The uh, energy sector, though, here was up strongly to the tune of 2.2%. And real estate also showed some nice strength. Uh, materials, however, was weighed down on uh, the precious metals or gold in particular. A uh, little change on the Canadian dollar today. Of course, we saw some strength in it yesterday. And from a headline perspective here in Canada, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau did announce that the federal government has extended the emergency wage and rent subsidies until June the 5th. Uh, we also heard from Health Officer Tam that they're worried about cases increasing. And uh, we've also, of course, seen reports in terms of where do we stand right now in the economy and the vaccine rollout. And of course, economists saying that uh, the slow vaccine rollout is the biggest impediment to the Canadian economy, uh, that we need vaccines, not essentially more spending and stimulus. Uh, away from that, building permits on the economic data front hit a new record $9.9 .9 billion in January, so housing clearly continues to be very strong. And from a stock story perspective here, um, Sleep Country, the ticker there is ZZZ, sleeping. Uh, that was up by 10.9%. They came in with better than expected results. Also, Auto Canada, that stuck up by 12%, better than expected results. And also, Laurentian Bank, that stock was up by about 10% on their most recent results as well. Uh, Shopify was down by 6.6% today. Uh, that obviously weighed on the tech sector here in Canada, and that is on the back of uh, an analyst coming out with a neutral rating. There's so many buy ratings on this stock. Uh, I guess neutral, in addition to, of course, what we saw in a bit of a selling day for tech stocks, weighed on Shopify. Lastly, uh, you know, I always talk about Bitcoin and QBTC, and you know I own QBTC. That's, uh, yeah, I wanted exposure. Um, to the crypto asset world. Um, interestingly, on a risk off day, you saw Bitcoin and QBTC up by about 6%. So one of the comments as it relates to owning some of the crypto assets is of course that it is uncorrelated to other areas of the market, is also an inflation hedge. Um, and uh, I just think that that's an interesting aspect to point out. I'll leave it there. Have a great night. A little bit more economic data to come for the remainder of this week as well as earnings and we'll bring that to you. Thanks.